Gracious and most heavenly Father, God, we come thanking you. We thank you, oh God, for blessing us today and uh, bringing us together to study thine word. Lord, be with us now as we study. Um, Lord, be with the teachers and the students. Lord, help us to come to know what it is that you would have us to know. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, let me see here. All right. I see some other folks are coming in. Praise God. Let me see here. I just want to make sure I get us on Facebook. And I just broke one of my favorite bracelets. Oh, I hate that. You broke it? <laughs> yeah, I broke it. I broke it. I broke it. I broke it. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> I'm going too fast, Laura. Well, you know, you can get some Gorilla Glue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I so hate that. I really like that bracelet. Um, let me see here. Okay. All right. All right. We are in, um, I think, page 167 of the book. Uh, amen. So happy to have Sister Stacy with us. I hope you're feeling better. Amen. I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> amen. Amen. I'll keep my camera off. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll have to see that pretty picture. Amen. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, obedience tonight. Obedience is costly. Um, and uh, let me see here. I'm still trying to fix stuff. Oh, mom is on. Hi, mom. Mom is my mom is on Facebook. <laughs> uh, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It says one of the most demanding adjustments to doing God's will is deciding to obey even when obedience is costly to those around you. You as well as those around you may have to pay a price for your obedience. And then he mentions the, a few scriptures here, one being from uh, Exodus, the fifth chapter. Um, and it says, when Moses was obedient and told Pharaoh to let Israel go, what did it cost the Israelites? And, um, and I think the answer to that would be their freedom. The Israelites paid a price for Moses to do God's will, they lost their freedom because you know Moses was doing uh, what does save the Lord. Um, when Jesus obeyed and went to the cross, how did it affect his mother Mary as she watched him die? And uh, I know that she was quite sad at that point. Um, the author says for Jesus to do God's will, others had to suffer. So Mary obviously lost a son. Um, and it says, when Paul was obedient and preaching the gospel to the Gentiles at Thessalonica, what happened to Jason? Um, and then if we look here, what the author wrote, says, Jason, Paul followed God's will in preaching the gospel. Others were led to respond to God's word in their own lives. Jason and some others were arrested by a rioting mob and were accused of, of treason because of their association with Paul. So, so the point here is that there are uh, parts of the Bible which illustrate <laughs> us that it becomes costly to be obedient. And, you know, uh, um, the author says, you must not overlook this element in knowing and doing the will of God. God will reveal his plans and purpose to you but your obedience will impact you and others around you. When, for instance, a couple surrender their lives to missions, it may cost those around them. So, so uh, I really wanna bring up, while we're at it, I wanna bring up a very familiar scripture. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Speaking of, um, of what it is that we're talking about uh, in regards to loss and obedience. Um, there's a scripture that I know that we're all familiar with that, uh, that says obedience 
is better than sacrifice. That comes. To, let's look at First Samuel, the fifteenth chapter. First uh, Samuel, the fifteenth chapter. First uh, Samuel fifteen. And I want to look at the, uh, I want to look at verse 20. So 1 Samuel 15, verse 20, it says, And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agog, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the spoiled sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. So, Let's look at that for a minute. When we say, when the scripture tells us, particularly Saul here, that obedience is better than sacrifice, that being the case is because, first of all, when we obey, we are following the will of God. Um, it can be costly. We can suffer some loss, as Saul did, as uh, Mary did in the example that was given to us. But the fact is that we, uh, we have obeyed. That is what God wants from us. The fact that we, we obey, we do as he asks, we do as he calls, uh, even though the results can, can be costly, in the end, God wins. And it is, our, it is out of our faith, particularly in this scripture, it is out of Paul's faith, I'm sorry, Saul's faith, that he's committed that his obedience will pay off. Uh, questions, comments to that on that. Well, even um, even when others are impacted or hurt, uh, that hurt is not uh, unto their uh, detriment. It's a, a human feeling that that's going to pass. But the ultimate end, even for Mary, is. Um, is that uh, her salvation was being secured, right? As well as everybody else's, right? Amen, amen. Um, and I think that when we think about what most most of our insecurities are in the un unknown, right? And, that's, and, that's, and the right now kind of thing, right? Know? Right, amen, amen. And what we have to understand is that our faith. Most of the un, most of faith is unknown, but we have to, as the author says on, I think page one sixty eight, uh, is that you have to be able to trust God even in the unknown. Mm -hmm. So, so to obey or to heed to the call or to commit to what it is the Lord put on your heart is even more important than. What even a perceived bad outcome. Because, because a lot of times when God, thank you, Holy Ghost, when God give us instruction, it don't make sense. And we even know that the outcome could be bad in our view. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, to obey God and, and, and trust him is worth it. Right. It's worth it. And I think, I, I believe, I believe that as believers, we have to constantly remind ourselves of that. Exactly. That the fact, okay, it may not, it may not turn out how I want it to turn out, but um, to obey him, to follow him, to trust him mm -hmm. is all worth it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to look at another scripture that the author brings up in, in this area, uh, Psalms 126, 126 number. A song. Um, that's why fear, fear is not of God. I've preached no. that before. Fear is not of God. Fear prevents us from stepping out on faith. Right. From walking on faith. 
Um, 126 number of Psalms. Uh, I want to look at uh, verse three. It says, the Lord have done great things for us. Wherefore, we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Then that sow in tears, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah today. That, that, that blesses me. I'm going to preach from that one day. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with them. Uh, what does that scripture say to any, any, anyone here as we read that? Well, uh, so, so when you're going out, um, being obedient and, and uh, uh, preaching or teaching or doing whatever God has assigned for you to do, that you may be doing it uh, weeping, it's not going to be easy. Right. But in the end, uh, bringing in the sheep is reaping the benefit of whatever the, the seed that you sowed. Right, 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 right. Anybody else like to speak on that? Now, when the author uses this example, it, I'm, I'm, I'm alleviating a lot of what he talked about his own example, but he was saying that his wife um, was pointed out to him that he did not expect the harvest. In the, the psalmist in here is talking about expecting a harvest or expecting, expecting the fact that, uh, that what we reap will bring about great things, the same as planting, the same as uh, the fruit, uh, 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 I'm sorry, uh, the same as, as, as um, <laughs> planting, implanting a seed, to reap the harvest. Right. Okay. So he had precious seed. So his seed had to be something good. Exactly. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And I'm actually going to. Would the precious seeds be the word of God? Uh, so very good question. So the question is, will the precious seeds be the word of God? Okay. And, and the answer is yes. Okay. Um, are you talking, you referencing that scripture we just read, right, Jean? Did I hear you? Are, yes. Or are you talking about in general? Uh, yes. So, actually, let's go back to that. I, I love, I'm going to preach from this one day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, the Lord have done, actually, I'm going to start from the beginning. When the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. That was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord have done great things for them. The Lord have done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streets in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weeping, bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again and rejoicing, bring his sheaves with him. In this case, he's talking about worship because when we, when we give an outpour towards the Lord, we're bearing precious seed and confident to know that we know who God is in this instance, in this instance. But, but uh, in, in the New Testament scripture, when, um, when um, Jesus is referencing the planting of seeds, is talking about scripture. He is talking about faith. He's talking about knowing him. Um, um, because as you plant good seed, Jesus told the disciples, then you bear good fruit. Mm -hmm. So so um, it really, and this is, the, that was the actual question, Gene, because really, this is a theme that we see in both the Old Testament scripture and the New Testament scripture. That, that notion of planting, reaping, sowing, uh, fertilizing, 
and you and you ask why you ask why because this is what the people knew during this time yeah, yeah. okay this is and, what they do. right and that is what i love about jesus and that's how i try my best to preach and teach to be honest with you all to to be able to relate to and this is off subject a little bit but it is so important that we're able to relate to what the people are most used to, common with, um, yeah. familiar with. Um, um, and, and, and it ends up with the psalmist in particular being the most powerful. To reap a harvest is powerful, okay? Mm -hmm. um, now let's go back to the author real quick. Uh, the author said, um, and I'm skipping down a ways, it, he's, he's referencing his wife. He said, um, I had to help Richard, under, his wife saying this, I had to help Richard understand what was taking place. I explained God's promise of a future harvest in Psalm 126 and 6. God worked through me at the moment to teach my son a deeply meaningful spiritual truth, okay? Mm -hmm. um, there is truth in the harvest. The important thing is that we trust that, y'all. We trust that our worship, as Psalm 126 is exclaiming, our worship is not in vain. Our sowing is not in vain. Our believing, our faith in God's word is not in vain. And that a harvest is coming. Mm -hmm. Our harvest is even being made available. Amen. I think I think sometimes we forget that a harvest, God's blessing is available unto us because we see so much of the bad, we don't see the good of the outcome. As a matter of fact, thank you, Holy Ghost. Sometimes we are even more concerned with what can go wrong then what God has already promised can go right. God has already promised us that if we believe, if we have faith, if we trust him, he's going to bless us. But sometimes our focus is so much on what is going wrong or what the perceived notion of going wrong is that we miss out on the blessing that God wants to give to us. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! Today that just blessed me. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Uh, any any um any questions comments on that? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, let's keep reading here. Um, here's a uh a good question that is asked. It says, "Can you recall an experience when your family had to pay a high price for you to do God's will?" Anybody like to volunteer and say that? Okay, I'll give you an example. I, I I I I feel that it was God's will for me to relocate to California. It was a huge investment. It was a huge sacrifice. My kids had to switch schools, and but I I followed the door that I believe God was opening. And even though the the um, the perceived outcome was bad, the immediacy of moving, kids got to transition to a new school, kids losing out on their friends, starting over. I knew that it was for me to be here. Okay, uh, and I know that's a blatant example, uh, but but it is an example of if you if the door is opening, sometimes, thank you, Lord, sometimes, the door is open, has opened, is obvious in being open. And we won't walk through the door because we're scared of what's on the other side. Or we're scared of what the perceived outcome is. But my brother, my sister, uh, uh, Chefo, uh, man, I feel like I'm in a poor bit right now. Chefo, my brothers and my sisters yeah. is all right. Some brothers may be out there listening. Some brothers may be yeah, on the line. Be, there might be some brothers <laughs> on the line. But, 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 but we've got to have faith to step out on what God has already shown or promised us. 
We right. got if we take one step, the Lord will give us two. Right. And Simply then because we're obedient. Go ahead. I'm sorry, sister. Go I ahead. was gonna say, not only is he taking you something, the Lord may be taking you away. Amen. That you oh, have God. no idea what, what yes. he's taking you away from. Mm -hmm. Man, Lord, that's good. Because God can purposely shut the door on some stuff. Mm -hmm. So that we can walk through another door. Right. It may hurt. It may not make sense. We may not want to walk through, walk out of the situation to another. But God purposely carried us through that way. Because it, it was essential. It had to happen. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, it says, let Christ communicate with his people. If you ever ask God's people to seek the mind of the Lord, be prepared to accept what they tell you. Honor what they say. I have seen some leaders ask the church, a committee or group to pray and seek God's will in the matter. The people express what they sense God was saying. Then the leader would say something like, now let me tell you what God wants us to do. If the people of God are the body of Christ, Christ is the head, the whole body must come to Christ for an understanding of God's will for that body. We must learn to trust God to communicate with his people. Now, let me explain something. And we talked about this months ago in this lesson. When we act as a church or even as people of faith, as one body, we must act as that body. The pastor is not the head of the body of Christ. The preacher, not the head of the body of Christ. God is. Amen. And I think, I think, <clears throat> A lot of times we miss that. So let me tell you what I will do as pastor. I know the vision our God had already gave me. My goal is always to provide confirmation or affirmation in telling y'all the same thing. Or at least revealing to y'all what the Lord showed me. And and Blackaby, the author, just proves that to us by explaining if we are all one body, God will communicate to all of us. It may not be the exact same message, but God will somehow communicate the vision over to us. And so that's why a lot of times I will say, y'all, we need to pray. We need to pray for our church. We need to pray for each other. Because I'm, 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 hope, I'm prayerful that in prayer, God will speak to you the same way he's speaking to me. And we must, we must uh, this is important for later on in the book, because we must come to understand that as a church, as baptized believers, as people of faith that are collectively together, we must all move in the same direction mm -hmm. in order for effective ministry to happen. And also, let me say this. That is true even amongst prayer partners or folks that you trust will pray for you. You do not want to be associated with a prayer partner that is not in, cohesive, in cohesiveness with you. You don't know if they're coming against you. You don't know if the prayers are accepted by the Lord. You don't know even if they are praying as you are. You want to be able to trust and to have faith that you can have corporate prayer, prayer with your prayer partner. So that's why it's, it's, it's important that we must all realize that God communicates to all of us and be able to uh, be ex open to that as well. I'm, I'm prayerful right now that y'all, that the Lord will speak to y'all some of the stuff that's been given to me, that's been given to me. So that's why I'm often saying, y'all, let's pray, 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 pray. Because in prayer, God is going to give, give it to you what he gave to me. Questions, comments on that? 
Okay. Let's look at this exercise he gave us. <clears throat> exercise number six, and I don't know if anybody did that, but it says, suppose your church began praying for a special financial need and a retired person since God wanted her to give half of her $4,000 life savings to meet that need. How do you think you would respond? Um, a is, I would refuse her gift and ask the more financially secure people to give instead. B, I would receive the gift, thank God for answering prayer, and weep about the high cost she had to pay for our church to do God's will. C, I would receive the gift, but I would try to find a way to replace the money as soon as possible. D, I would ask her to pray for two more weeks to make sure this is what God wanted her to do. Anybody answer that or did that? I looked at that, but I couldn't answer. I just, it was difficult for me to say. Right, right. Yeah, that's a tough question. Anybody else would like to take a stab at it? Well, just because a person is a retired person, it doesn't mean that they that they would really have less than a, a working person. Uh huh. Uh, because we don't know what the retirement is. So uh -huh. if you receive the gift, thank God for answering prayer and weep about the high cost she had to pay for uh, our church to do God's will. But if you weep about it, uh, you shouldn't, you know, that part, if you have received the gift, you should receive Thanksgiving if you decide to receive it. But yeah, sometimes yeah. when people, they say, don't uh, me of my blessing if they want to give. So. Well, I wouldn't weep about it, though. If I... Unless you weep in joyful tears. All right. Yeah, weep, weep is a form <laughs> of lament and worship. Yeah. Um, and so it sounds like you want to go with B, right? Uh, Hello. Uh, Laura, now let me, uh, before I answer that, let me go to what he says on page 170, um, the second paragraph from the top. He says, some pastors or finance committee say, we can't ask our people to give too often or it will hurt our ongoing budget giving. I learned never to deny God's people the opportunity to contribute. I never tried to pressure or manipulate people to give. That was not my job. Instead, I created the opportunity and encouraged them to contribute only what God led them to donate. Most of God's people will cheerfully do God's will. Some of them will respond with generosity, counting in an honor that God has allowed them to sacrifice for him. Some will have, a, have life changing experiences as a result of such an opportunity. If y'all don't hear anything else from me tonight or the next few weeks, hear me what I when I say this. We don't ever, 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 ever want to deny somebody of their blessing. Uh, somebody say, man, I got $5,000. That's all I got. And I'm giving it to God. It's not for oh, us. Yeah. To, yeah, exactly. It's not for us to talk that person out of it. No. Because we don't know what God is speaking to that person. So the correct answer would be B, Belor, because in the end, we are worshiping that God spoke to them and gave them God's will. We don't ever want to deny anybody of their blessing. We don't, we don't know what's going on in someone's mind, in their life, or, or what the Lord said to them that, that allowed them to do what it is that they do. Yeah. But we can worship God and thank God for it and, 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 and incorporate worship in a way that it encourages them, excuse me, it encourages them to follow the will of God or to follow or to be able to follow what the Lord is telling them. You know, you know something, oftentimes God can be speaking to us. And, 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 and we know what has been placed on our heart, but we don't do it because we have not, we're still fearful. We have not been placed in an environment or 
in, in, an, uh, in, a, in a place that encourages us to follow his will. And sometimes that is the church. Sometimes that's Bible study. Sometimes that's a women's group. Sometimes that's our job, uh, our jobs, our places of employment. But, but, but sometimes it is, we have to find that environment that nurtures our belief. That nurtures our uh, ability, belief to give and things of that nature. Questions, comments on that? I just have a problem with uh, if I'm going to give, I would give and not say or tell anyone. Of course, the financial people right. would know, uh, you know, and they wouldn't say anything. But uh, right. my my thing is giving and not saying anything. Right. That's yeah, the that's the way to give. Yeah. 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 Not, because not to be uh, boastful. Right. Exactly. Uh, I'm not one that don't seen, but to help to serve. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't believe in the five dollar line, the ten dollar line, the fifty dollar line, the hundred dollar line. You know, you go to some of these churches and they and they be in worship. They be like, I want everybody. You want to give a hundred dollars to get in that line over there? Y'all have been in service like that? Yes. Oh, I've been in. I've been in a plenty. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe you. Know, I know my son-in-law. He got in this particular line, and my daughter said, "Oh, he got in the wrong line." I right. said, "No, he knew what he was doing. It's nobody's business. What he might have got in the five hundred dollar line and gave five dollars. That was him. You know." <laughs> right. Right. Um. Um. I don't, I don't give every Sunday. I don't give every Sunday. I give as the Lord allows me to give. Mm -hmm. right. And it's between mm -hmm. me and God what I give. That's right. That's, right. And that's truthfully the way that it should be because even in the Old Testament, when folks brought their sacrifice, it was according to what was on their heart yeah. and what their ability to get their sacrifice was. Right. But, but I might, and I think I have put it out there. Hey, y'all, we have this goal. We have this need that we're trying to do with the church. I'm asking you to do as the Lord gave you to do. Well, that's mm -hmm. okay. That's Amen. Okay. Amen. Yeah. Because all of, all of that is between us and God. Yes. Uh, yeah, and when we get that quarter of a million or half a million, we don't have to know it came from the West. We don't care. We just say, thank you, Lord. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's let's go to the last part of the uh, scripture or the last part of the lesson. It asks an awesome, awesome question that I really want to pose to you. It says, how will you respond to God when he calls you to a sacrificial commitment? Will you say yes, Lord, or no, that costs too much? Anybody like to be vulnerable in asking and answering that? I would hope to say yes, Lord. I would hope that I would be in that frame of mind to, to say if, if the Lord is saying, I need you to do this, mm -hmm. to say yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And, and to be honest with you, if you're not there, pray that you can get there. Right. Mm -hmm. I would hope yeah. to be ready. Mm -hmm. Because God, that's a, a part of God's total surrender. Uh, that's a part of us, our, excuse me, Lord, our total surrender unto God is what, mm -hmm. really what I'm trying to say tonight. Mm -hmm. um, um, he says here, he says, you may think the last question is a little premature. Not really. That is what the Lordship of Christ is all about. You should be able to answer the last question without knowing anything about what God may call you to. Your whole life should be lived with the attitude of, Lord, whatever you may ask of me today or in the future, my answer is yes. Amen. We got to be able to say yes, Lord. Um, mm -hmm. Let's look at the gospel according to St. John. Uh, the gospel according to St. John. <laughs> chapter 15. I do want to start a little bit on the next uh, portion of scripture tonight. John chapter 15 uh, verse 
verse uh, four. So John 15 and four. John 15 and four said, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For what without me, this is what we were talking about earlier, Gene. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and it is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire. Jesus is telling them that if you are not affiliated with him, you, you literally are nothing. You, you're, 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 um, you cannot be saved. You're, if you don't have Christ in you, amongst you, part of you, you basically are, you can't exist. And that may not necessarily mean physically, but mentally, you're not there. You're just breathing. You're living, breathing. You're dead. You're with it there. You're with it away. So, so this, in essence, this scripture says that the disciples had to be totally dependent on Jesus, dependent on him as, as God's son, dependent on the fact we all, the scripture tells us that we have to be totally dependent upon our faith, our belief of Jesus Christ and God, our Savior and Messiah. Um, the author says on page 172, another adjustment that is a part of knowing and doing the will of God is you coming to a total dependence on God to complete what he wants you to do through you. When you are God's servant, you must remain in an intimate relationship with God in order for him to complete his work through you. You must depend on God alone. Mm -hmm. The adjustment requires moving from doing work for God according to your abilities, your gifts, your likes and dislikes, and your goals to being totally dependent on God, his working, and his resources. Mm -hmm. This is a major adjustment and it's never easy to make. Y'all, this is a huge adjustment where our faith system, our means of living is total surrender unto God, total dependence upon our faith. Why? Because Jesus has already told us that without him, we are nothing. So I don't care what the perceived outcome is. God is with me, I'm going to make it. So I don't care what my, my bank account says. God is with me and he will provide for me a means to make it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care, I don't care uh, 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 what tomorrow may bring. I trust that God is with me. God is calling all of us as believers to be totally, impressively dependent upon mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. well, okay, I love that he says, without God at work in you, you can do nothing to produce kingdom fruit. When God purposes to do something, he guarantees it will come to pass. He is the one who will accomplish what he intends to do. If you depend on anything other than God, you are asking for failure in kingdom terms. We are already doomed when we lack faith, when we lack a total surrender, all right? When we lack a total dependence on God. I'm going to stop there tonight. Uh, when we lack uh, 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 trusting him for the, for, for the outcome. Questions, comments on that? Discussion. All right, we're going to stop there um, and we're going to uh, go ahead and pray. Um, if you would just pray with me during this time as we go to the throne of grace together, we want to remember everyone on our sick list uh, and um, pray for those that are traveling, pray for travel, grace and mercy 
those that are in hospital, nursing home, um, wherever they may be, sick bed, we want to continue praying. My God and our Father, God, we thank you tonight. We thank you, oh God, for uh, bringing us together to study your word. Yes. Dear God, um, it's such a privilege and an honor to study your word and to get reckoning of what you would have us to know. God, help stir us in the right direction, Lord. Um, I pray for our, our sins, Lord. Forgive us of all of our sins. Forgive yes. us of, of, of anything that we've done that was not like you. God, I even pray for enemies tonight, those that have yes. come, come against us, oh God, those that may have uh, downtrodden us or set barriers in our way. God, I pray for them, oh God, that you would enlighten them, that you would um, provide a light amongst them that we know the same. God, have mercy on them and Thank us. Have, Lord, provide grace <laughs> and mercy upon us, oh God, that, that we may do your will, that we may constantly walk alongside of you, Lord. And Lord, walk before us. God, we pray for a stirring, a stirring up of, of good things, a stirring up of blessings, oh God. We pray that your Holy Spirit, oh God, will shine amongst men, oh God, shine amongst us, women, believers, our children, oh God. Let your Holy Spirit reign amongst us all those that believe and trust who you are. God, we trust you. We trust you, oh God, for new days to come. Oh God, we trust you for blessings to shower on down. God, we need you for blessings upon blessings on tonight. God, help us in the name of Jesus, Lord. Help us to know, God, that you are yet God. God, yes. we need you, Lord. There are some that are struggling, some that are having a tough time. God, let provide strength Oh, God, to the weak, provide strength, Lord, to those that are, 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 are lack strength and lack faith and lack trust. God, give strength to the sickly. Oh, God, on tonight, God, I come praying for every loved one we know. Oh, God, that's suffering, God, that needs you in their lives. Oh, Lord, whether it be physically, whether it be psychologically, oh, God, God, I come here praying, oh, God, for better and brighter days, not just for us but for our loved ones on tonight. God, we come in praying for our children, our grandchildren, oh God. The people of faith, the church, oh God. christ City Missionary Baptist Church, God. Yes. God, we pray, Lord, that you will continue to open doors, strengthen us, oh God. Continue to provide for us, oh Lord. Oh Lord, oh God, we somebody needs you. Somebody needs you, oh Lord. Somebody can't make it without you. Somebody tired. Somebody's so tired, Lord. Lord, let them continue to say their prayer of faith, oh God, but don't allow them to give up on faith. God, we pray for the faithful on tonight, God. God, we thank you in advance. We thank you for victory. We thank you for making a way, oh God. We thank you for your word that said it would never leave nor forsake us, oh God. Oh God, help us to put our trust in you our way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you tonight. Amen. Uh, pray for your pastor. Amen. Pray for your church family. Amen. We'll Amen. see you next time. All right. Good night. Good night.